Greetings everybody, my name is Kerry and I'm here with the third Sudoku lesson at the tricky level. Once again, I will take a look at row and column clues, but in this video I'm going to show some tricks and techniques that will help you identify some of the more well-hidden solving clues. Here I have a crazydad.com puzzle which is rated at the challenging difficulty, and I'll start by generating a couple row clues on the ones on the left-hand side. So if we look at the top set of boxes, I've highlighted a couple ones to identify that the first two rows already have a one, and the implication is that in the one box that doesn't have one, that's the one on the left, we know that a one has to go in that third row. So I'll just write in a small number on the side there to show this. And then if we look at the lower set of boxes, we can do the same thing with the two ones at the bottom. And in the left box, the one is going to go in the second to bottom row. I'm going to skip ahead slightly and look at the center group of boxes, particularly this sixth column, which I have highlighted in beige. I'm going to see if I can find a column clue, not by necessarily targeting that lowest box, but instead by looking at all of the blank cells uh, elsewhere in that column. And in fact, there's only one right on the top row. So if there's any number that still needs to go into the column that can't go in that top box, we can create a column clue in the lowest box. You'll notice that I already have an eight in that box. However, if we look at the nine, which I've highlighted in green, that nine is going to block this cell here from, go, uh, from taking a nine, and that means I can create a column clue in the lowest box. I know that the nine has to go in the highlighted column in the bottom box. So let's place that there. Before we make use of that column clue, I'm just going to do a little bit more scanning on these eights here. If we look at the bottom right hand box, I've highlighted three green eights and you should be able to see that the only cell that can take an eight within that box is that center cell. Uh, it has to go in that second column, and since the top row already has an 8, that's going to force the 8 into the lower cell in that column. And now that that 8 is solved, we have two 8s, and the only cell below our column clue of 8 is going to be that cell there. And now that leaves us with only two choices for where to place the 9. But since uh, the lower cell already has 9 on its row, that's the 9 in green, that's going to force the 9 to go in the upper cell. I'm going to move a little bit ahead in the puzzle, and I'm going to focus on row 3, which I've highlighted in beige. Uh, this is a row with four blank cells. We need to place a 1, 3, 7, and 9 somewhere in those four blank cells. And we should notice something interesting in the left box, which has two of those blanks. However, two of the four candidates are already in that 3x3 three three box. So those two cells must be the other two candidates in some order. And that means uh, that those two cells will be a 1 or a 7. So much like the previous example, the idea here here is that you're not uh, you're not creating column clues or row clues through traditional scanning. You're looking at other clues elsewhere in the grid. So in this case, we're looking within the three by three box to know what numbers can't go in those two cells, and that leaves us only two possibilities. So that's why I'm calling these hidden hints. So now that we have that row clue of 7, that's going to allow us to add, um, add a 7 into the middle box there because we have a row clue of 7 on the third row uh, that's going to go in the leftmost box and then the 7 that's already been placed in the right box is going to prevent those two red cells from being a 7. So that means the 7 has to go in the upper cell. I'm going to switch over to a different challenging level puzzle, and I'm going to draw your attention to the two row clues right to the left of the puzzle. Both of them are row clues of seven. So in the top box, we know that a seven is going to be placed in one of the two shaded cells, but the three is blocking the seven from going into the third column. And if we look at the box immediately below that, we have exactly the same situation where a six is blocking the seven from going into that third column. So I can just go over the logic. In this box here, the row clue of 7 shows that the 7 can't go in the third column. In the box below it, it can also not go into column 3. 
That means in order to fit A7 into column three, it has to go into this uh, lower left-hand box there. And that's going to allow us to place a second column clue alongside the one. So now that we have two clues for two cells, we can form a matching pair of one and seven. And once those numbers are locked in, the other three cells on that column uh, are going to be a two, four, and eight. And we actually have enough information to solve all three of them. If we look at the two, that's going to block these two cells here from being a two. That means the two must go in the uppermost cell. And now that we only have two cells left in that box, this four here is going to prevent it from, from going into the cell on the same row. It has to go on the lower green cell. And the remaining cell will therefore be an eight. And that's it for this lesson. I hope you learned something from this video and I thank you for watching. If you wish to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe and or leave a comment below. I will see you on my next video. Take care.